What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and it's time for yet another Unearthed Arcana review. I know I've been putting these out pretty quickly, but that's because my goal is to get back up to current so that when they come out, with starting with The Monk on Monday, I'll be on track to get them all going forward. So, that being said, here is the Druid review. This is Druids, and there's a little bit of alterations for Wild Shape, which I must confess, I didn't really read through that much because... It was just wasn't as interesting to me as the three circles. So we're actually going to kind of go through that together um, when we do that. But we do have three new circles. The circle of uh, dreams, shepherd, and I believe twilight. Yes. So what do we get? Circle of dreams is a very fey based circle. Uh, Druid's guardianship over the natural world makes for a good alliance between them and good aligned fey. Um, so they don't get new spells for this. They get the Balm of the Summer Court, which they kind of have um, something similar to this happening later, and I really like this. It reminds me a little bit of the Undying Light Warlock, but you basically just get a separate pool of dice at level 2 of just D6s. You have a pool of Fey Energy represented by a number of D6s equal to your Druid level. As a bonus action, you can choose an ally you can see within 120 feet of you, and spend a number of those dice equal to half your Druid level or less. Um, roll the spent dice and add them together. The target regains that many hit points. Um, also, they gain one temporary hit point per die spent, and its speed increases by five per die spent. The speed increase lasts for a minute. You regain the expended dice when you finish a long rest. So, if we're talking about a 20th level druid, the most you could heal somebody up at level 20 would be 10d6. But they'd also get an additional 10 temporary hit dice and an additional 50 uh, feet of movement. I mean, again, it's level 20, but still. Uh, and the fact that it works out as a bonus action to 120 feet is big. Uh, it doesn't get to add anything to it, but it makes it pretty much on par, or sort of, with a healing word, but it's double the distance. Uh, this is a really RP one, but I kind of like it. At 6th level is Hearth of Moonlight and Shadow. During a short or long rest, you can invoke the shadowy power of the Gloaming Court to ward your campsite from intruders. At the start of the rest, you can create an area with a 30-foot radius, uh, an area with a 30-foot radius. Within this area, you and your allies gain a plus 5 bonus to passive perception. Oh, I'm sorry, not passive. I keep reading it as passive. To perception checks to detect creatures and any light from open flames, such as a campfire, torches, or anything else, is not visible outside this area. These effects end when the rest uh, finishes or when you leave the area. So it's a 30-foot radius. So it's a 60-foot diameter circle. That's most camps, if not, you know, if they're not even closer than that. So everybody's got a plus five to their perception, which is big, and you don't get you like you can have your nice campfire, keep yourself warm, and nobody can see it, which is great. Uh, and there's no check for them to see it; they just can't see it. It's just invisible from outside of that area. At 10, you get hidden paths. You can use the hidden, unpredictable magical pathways that some Fey use. This is a really cool ability. I like this. On your turn, you can teleport up to 30 feet to a spot you can see. Each foot of this teleportation costs one foot of your movement. Um, so it's basically one to one. If you have a 40 foot movement speed, let's say, you could teleport 30 feet and then still move 10 feet. But uh, you can use this feature to teleport someone else. As an action, you can teleport a willing ally you touch up to 30 feet to a point you can see. Once you use either option, teleporting yourself or an ally, you can't use this option again until 1d4 rounds have passed. But that's it, though. 1d4 rounds and you get it back. And, reading this closer, on your turn... So essentially, with the if you use it on yourself... It's just your movement. Rather than actually walking, you just teleport 30 feet rather than walking 30 feet. So that's pretty cool. So it can get you out of grapples, out of opportunity attacks, and things like that. Uh, it's only an action if you choose to teleport your ally that way. And then at 14, you get Purifying Light. The favor of the Summer Court allows you to end spells that hamper you and your allies. When you cast a spell with a spell slot and restores hit points to you or an ally this turn, you can simultaneously target the healed creature with Dispel Magic using a spell slot with a level equal to the slot used to cast the healing spell. You can use this feature three times, and you regain expended uses when you finish a long rest. If the healing spell targets more than one creature, you can use this feature on more than one at a time, expending one use 
of it per creature. I really like this. This is a game I was talking about a couple episodes back where this three times per, per long rest or three times per short or long rest seems to be a new thing they're kind of testing out with these play tests. I don't know why they picked three. Um, the, the only thing that's kind of similar to this feature is uh, Arcana Clerics get this. I think that's their sixth level ability, possibly, where they can uh, end an effect on a creature when they when they cast a spell on them or a healing spell, which is pretty neat. So that's the Circle of Dreams, the Fey one. Then we have the Circle of the Shepherd. This is sort of the Beast Jewel spirity based one. It has some really cool stuff. The fourteenth level ability is one of my favorites. Uh, so. At second level, um, you can bond with some animal spirits. As a bonus action, you can magically summon a medium spirit to an unoccupied space you can see within 60 feet of you. A spirit has an aura and a 30-foot radius around it. It doesn't occupy its space. It is immobile, and it counts as neither a creature nor an object. What happens? You choose either bear, hawk, or wolf. Uh, for bear, you and your allies who are in the aura, when the spirit appears, gain five temporary or gain temporary hit points equal to five plus your druid level. In addition, you or your allies gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws while in the area. Hawk is you and your allies gain advantage on ranged attack rolls against the uh, targets in the spirit's aura. And wolf is you and your allies gain advantage on all ability checks made to detect creatures in the spirit's aura. In addition, if you cast a spell with a spell slot that restores hit points to anyone inside or outside the aura, each of your allies in the aura also regains hit points equal to your druid level. The spirit persists for one minute. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. You get to pick which spirit you summon each time. So the wolf one could be good. Uh, if you need to do some heals, because when you cast a healing spell, it heals everybody. And the bear one can also be good, because it's just temporary hit points equal to 5 plus your druid level, and it doesn't say that those go away once you leave the space, I don't believe. Um, no, they just stay up. I, I, I assume they're probably meant to go away. Um, the spirit creates an aura. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, who are in the aura, so you'd lose it if the aura goes away. But the healing persists. Also at second level, beasts can understand your speech, and you gain the ability to decipher their noises and motions into recognizable words and phrases. Most beasts lack the intelligence to convey or understand sophisticated concepts, but a friendly beast could relay that it has seen or heard in, a, in the recent past. The ability does not grant you any special friendship with beasts, though you can combine this ability with gifts and other favors to curry favor with them as you would any other NPC. Just a cool little flavor thing. Six level is Mighty Summoner. Any beast summoned or created by your uh, spells gains two benefits. Its hit point maximum increases by two per hit die, and the damage from its natural weapons are considered magical for the purposes of immunity and stuff like that. So that's also a clarification for those of you who are unaware. A summoned creature does not have magical attacks, even though a conjured animal creature is literally made from magic, its attacks are non-magical unless you have this ability. Uh, tenth level, whenever you finish a long rest, you gain the benefits of Death Ward. The spell's duration is extended to 24 hours. So essentially, you are basically always under the effects of Death Ward, which is when you go to zero, you go to one instead, uh, and then you know you got what you can potentially stay up, which, which synergizes amazingly with Faithful Summons, the 14th level ability. If you are reduced to zero hit points or incapacitated against your will, you can immediately gain the benefits of a Conjure Animals as if it was cast from a 9th level slot. It summons 4 beasts of your choice who are challenge rating 2 or lower. The Conjured Beasts appear within 20 feet of you. If they receive no commands from you, they protect you from harm and attack your foes. The spell lasts for 1 hour. Once you use this feature, you can't use it until you finish a short or, or until you finish a long rest. So first of all, not only are you getting to cast a 9th level spell at 14th level, that is 3 levels earlier than you normally would be able to, but it summons four creatures of challenge rating two and because whenever you go to zero you pop up to one from your guardian spirit ability you go down to zero you're back up to one and now you have four animals that you can command i believe as a free action as per the conjure animal spell uh and it lasts for an hour and it's non-concentration so there you go solid ability i just like the idea and the imagery of like the this druid gets hit gets knocked down and then they're like the guardian spirit picks them back up and then four 
I don't know. I don't know what a good challenge rating two monster is. Four polar bears, I think. That's challenge rating two monster up here. And they all have multi-attack, and you can command them all for free. On top of doing stuff on your turn. Potentially, uh, I don't know, summoning your spirit animal or something like that. Doing other stuff to... Oh, not to mention that all of the conjured creatures have magical attacks and additional 2 HP per hit die. So don't forget, they kind of, that, these, I like it because these three features synergize exceptionally well. And lastly is the uh, Circle of Twilight, which is a sort of a mirror of the Circle of Dreams. Um, rather than healing, you're doing damage. So, second level, you learn to uh, unravel and harvest the life energy of creatures. You have a pool of energy, similar to the Dream Druid, of D10s equal to your Druid level. When you roll or uh, damage for a spell, you can increase that damage by spending dice from your pool. You spend a number of dice equal to half your Druid level or less. Roll the spent dice and add it to the damage as necrotic damage. If you kill one or more hostile creatures with the spell augmented in this way, you or an ally uh, within 30 of your choice within 30 feet regains 2 hit points per die spent to increase the spell's damage die, or 5 hit points per die if, the, if at least one of the creatures slain was undead. You gain the expended dice back when you finish a long rest. So think about that. You, you're doing damage with a spell. Could be... Let's see, your druid. So it's a good AoE flame strike, I think they have. Or wall of fire, or something like that. A sort of AoE thing, and then you blow all these dice and add D10s of necrotic damage to that already powerful AoE thing. And then any creature... Uh, that gets slain, uh, if you kill one or more hostile creatures, gain two hit points per die spent to increase the damage die. Um, so I think that is, yeah, you or one, kill one or more hostile creatures with a spell augmented in this way. You are an ally of your choice that you can see within 30 feet regains two hit points per die spent. Okay, so it's just per die spent. It's not per die per creature, unless one of them was undead, then you get 5 instead of 2. Speech Beyond the Grave is your level 6 ability. Uh, using this feature, you can cast Speak with Dead without material components, and you understand what the target of the cat. Uh, you understand what the target of this cast says. Uh, it can understand your questions even if you don't share a language or it is not intelligent enough to speak. Once you use this feature, you can't use it till short or long rest. I mean, it's flavor, but Speak with Dead. Where they can always understand you as a freebie once per short rest isn't a bad thing to have. Uh, at 10th level, you gain resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. In addition, while you're incapacitated, uh, while you aren't, I'm sorry, aren't inca incapacitated, any ally within 30 feet of you has advantage on death saves, which is solid. Uh, necrotic and radiant, they're not a ton of damage in the game that does necrotic and radiant, but when they happen, it hurts, so it's good to have those. And at 14th, uh, which I feel is kind of the weakest one out of all of this, using this feature, you can cast Etherealness. Once the spell ends, you can't cast it with this feature until you finish a short or long rest. I mean, Etherealness, once per short rest, isn't bad at level 14, but I feel like it pales in comparison to summoning four CR2 monsters that last for an hour after you went down to zero, but then pop back up to one. They all have magical attacks and an extra 2 HP per hit die. I feel like that one just, it just doesn't measure up. And then lastly is this optional rules for wild shapes. So we're going to go through this one together because, I, again, I really didn't read this. Uh, the optional rule presented here is designed for the player and the DM who would like to trade some of the flexibility for ease of use. When you gain the wild shape feature at second level, you are deeply familiar with three beasts of your choice and can transform into them. To choose the three beast shapes, you first need to determine whether your druid grew up in a temperate or tropical region, consulting with your DM. Then, refer to the common beast shapes table that corresponds to the region you selected. That table lists the beasts you can choose from based on your druid level. The table presents the animals that a druid is most likely to have seen as a novice, to have learned about through mystic research, or to have a special affinity with. Each time you gain a druid level later, you can choose one or more, or choose one more beast shape from the same table you use at level 2. So, we've got temperate and tropical. At level 2 in the Temperate, um, you can see... Oh, and that has a little asterisk for people that can choose them at level 2 uh, for the Circle of the Moon Druids. So here you go. You start off by choosing, what did it say, 3 Beast Shapes at level 2. 3 from this. 
And then each time you gain a druid level, you can add another one. And then when you hit four, this is your level options. And when you hit eight, these are your options. Uh, starting B shapes. To begin using wild shape quickly at level at second level, choose one of the following starting packages. Temperate, cat, elf, wolf, or elk, wolf, or tropical, panther, riding horse, or spider, or and spider. Temperate, circle of the moon, brown bear, cat, war horse, and tropical, ape, tiger, war horse. Gaining extra beast shapes. In addition to the beast shapes you gain for free when you level up, you can acquire new shapes on your adventure. Do you see a dinosaur, saber-toothed tiger, or giant eagle, or some other exotic critter that you want to turn into? This rule gives you a method for learning how to do so. It requires you abide by the limitations in a wild shape feature. Uh, when you see a beast whose shape you'd like to learn, you have two options. Observ observation. You learn the beast's shape after observing its behavior for at least one hour and succeeding on a nature check equal to uh, with a check DC equal to 10 plus the beast challenge rating. For this observation period, your vantage point, whether physical or magical, must be within 150 feet of the beast. If you have previously spent at least one hour reading a scholarly work about the creature, you make advantage. You, know, you make this check with advantage. Interaction. You learn the beast shape after interacting with it peacefully for 10 minutes and succeeding on a handle animal, handle animal check with a DC equal to 10 plus the beast's challenge rating. For this interaction period, you must be within 15 feet of the beast, and you, if you spend at least one minute petting it, you gain advantage on the check. Either of these options can be assisted by magic. For example, divination magic can be used to provide safe observation of a dangerous animal, and a spell like animal friendship can lay the groundwork for a peaceful interaction. So there, I just having just read that, I do like this actually quite a bit. Um, I often find when I have a druid player, it's like, oh, what do, what do I really know? What animals have I seen? And typically what I do is I say, give me a list of animals you think you've seen, and then I'll tell you whether or not you've seen them. Um, but I like this, uh, especially if you kind of have like an... I feel like if you have an elf character, or some sort of long-lived character that's lived in a forest, I feel like this doesn't exactly apply. Like, you're going to have more. If you've lived for 250 years, you've probably seen a cat, a boar, a deer, a badger, and so on and so forth. Especially if you lived in, like, a forest and nature as an elf, or, or any or a halfling, or what have you. Especially halflings, the uh, the one or the one gnome, uh, I think it's the rock gnome, uh, whichever one could speak with animals. Essentially, that I feel like they kind of you would have talked with animals. Uh, I do like this though. This is definitely good for new players, as it said, to kind of just keep keep their put the blinders on and be like, guys, listen, here, just choose from these. Don't go crazy. Don't overthink it. Here's your list. I do, however, really like this, creating extra or gaining extra beast shapes, even not for using this, because I've had this come up in a game where one of my players said, can I turn into that creature? And I was like, you really didn't interact with it. Like you saw it and then you ran away. You don't really know anything about how it works. Um, this specifically says peaceful interaction. I like that, but I also feel like if you get into combat with a creature and it beats you up pretty good and you manage to defeat it, you get a pretty good handle on how it works when it's wrecking your face. So I might add another thing for like a combat interaction. Um, not necessarily sure how that goes, but I am going to be using this um, going forward, especially if you do see something like a T-Rex from like way far away. Uh, you don't want to get close and you're like pull out your telescope and you're observing it or what have you um, but anyway guys that was the druid circles what do you think i feel like i like twilight a lot i like the idea of just bumping up your damage insanely at the end there um, i like the necrotic and radiant resistance and especially i feel like this would be a really cool thing to add to an item um while you're while you aren't incapacitated any creature within 30 feet of you has advantage on death saves i think that's a really cool thing to add into a magic item of some sort not exactly sure what but i think it's pretty neat um speak with dead and etherealness for free not bad i really just like the idea of adding like just having a pool essentially almost like a smite or a uh i don't know if these double on a critical hit i guess maybe if you are rolling to attack. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how that would work. But I, I like the idea, and I like that you also get healed from the Harvest Scythe. I also like the idea of kind of the darker 
druid wielding a scythe I or a sickle. I think that's pretty neat. Either one, dual sickles, whatever. Uh, I really like the Circle of the Shepherd. It makes me feel like sort of a callback to older edition druids where they had animal companions. I know these ones really don't have animal companions, but you do summon an animal spirit. You can talk to animals, and the animals you do choose to summon with your conjure spells are significantly more powerful. Plus, anything that gets you freebie death ward is great, whether it's an item, whether it's something like a, a half orc, and the relentless endurance. But this is at level 10. Paladins typically, uh, I think, uh, Oath of the Ancients Paladin get it at 14. You get it at level 10, which is pretty cool. And then this level 14 ability, just like I said, for the imagery of it happening alone, I love this. Plus, which you're going to pop up back to one, you potentially just bolstered your team immensely by dropping yourself to zero hit points. Um, that's also not including if you were to do like a self-inflicted, like drop a firestorm on yourself uh, and you drop yourself to zero hit points. That counts too. Um, and then Circle of Dreams, I, I love, I, I think healing is great. I, I'm a big fan of healing. Uh, I know druids can do solid healing just at base, but this just makes them that much better of a healer. Uh, I really, really like the Hearth of Moonlight and Shadow, the ability to block out the the campfire. Uh, I don't know why I like that so much. I just really do. Uh, and then just freebie teleports is amazing. It's not like uh, like a, a rogue or, or a, a shadow monk or, or whatever, where you have to be from shadow to shadow. It's just, you just do it. And then dispel magic as part of uh, that. So I, I, I'd say it's a pretty tough tie for me between uh, Dreams and Shepherd. Twilight just kind of falls off for me. And again, I do like the known beast shaped option for new players. And I really like the gaining extra beast shape option for new and veteran players alike. So anyway, guys, that's been Circle uh, uh, Druid Circles on the Unearthed Arcana article uh, tomorrow or probably Monday morning. Um, I'll have the fighter one come out that way Monday night. I can go ahead and fill that, uh, do the, the monk one when it comes out and see what we get for that. And potentially on our Tuesday night stream, be using one of those if one of them is a little bit better than the one that I'm currently messing with. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this. I hope the rest of your weekend is great and I will see you next time.